With our mission is to make the dreams of Potomac Yard into reality. A necessary condition for the development of Potomac Yards in Alexandria is the construction of the trunk sewer. The, uh, the trunk sewer, uh, I've called it the super sewer, but without its completion, the Potomac Yard will continue to be a former rail yard. As it is now, we can make 212 acres uh, a whole new town, a whole new community. So this Potomac Yard trunk sewer is the necessary first step for the Potomac Yard development in Alexandria. It's 8,660 feet of challenge. The Potomac Yard was originally developed as a rail yard in 1906, and over the next 80 years grew to one of the largest rail facilities on the East Coast. With the consolidation of the rail industry, the yard fell into decline until its active rail use ended in 1991. Over the next decade, the property changed hands several times until on March 22, 2001, the yard was acquired by Crescent Resources with the intent to place the property back into productive use. One of the major obstacles to development in this part of town has always been the lack of adequate sewer capacity. The geography of the area requires that any new sewer system would need to cross Old Town Alexandria in order to reach the Alexandria Sanitation Authority's wastewater treatment plant located about one and three quarter miles on the other side of town. Certainly 8,000 feet of sanitary sewer pipe in an open field would be a no-brainer. I mean, you just start opening up the ground and laying the pipe and going your merry way. This is nearly two miles through a very diverse urban space. It has been far more complex and far more challenging than I would have ever anticipated it. And I think if you ask the contractors the same question, they would probably say the same thing. If you look at it on drawings, I think it makes up like eight sheets in a plan set. If you if you look at it in an aerial, it you know, makes up a couple pictures. When you literally drive down the alignment and you see the eight-story apartment buildings, the, you know, the auto repair shops, the historic town, the, the major intersections, the private property, and you know, you, you really see where you're going. Having gone through the alignment, there are little challenges in each different section. I mean, we've, we start up at the northern end, one of the main lines of the CSX Railroad, and also uh, Wamata, or Metro, and that's its own little uh, section and there are issues that we have to deal with and we have to have uh, you know railroad or our metro sponsored flagman to watch us there so there are in inherent risks in that section and then we go to a an industrial I would say commercial type section for a, a few blocks and there are issues with deliveries when you know when we're doing our work how does X company get their delivery trucks in and we go to the next section and it's a uh, you know, fairly dense residential with homeowners on both sides and, you know, we have churches and, you know, one day we were scheduled to drill a, a shaft and lo and behold, uh, the church had a funeral service scheduled for that day and um, so in the residential areas you have a lot of different challenges to deal with. Well, in a city like Alexandria where you have very dense development and dense um, residential populations, particularly along the alignment between the Potomac Yard development and the Alexandria Sanitation Authority treatment plant, it would be extremely disruptive to the city, the citizens, the small business owners to try to do an open cut for the installation of the sewer. So it had to be microtunneling to really minimize the impact and disruption. Primarily this sewer is a benefit for both the developer and for the city. It allows the developer to have the capacity to develop the entire Potomac Yard. The city's infrastructure wouldn't have allowed them to tie into our existing infrastructure. So it, this sewer project allows them to develop their site. It also provides additional capacity for the city to use later. We're in the process now of drilling a, one of the access shafts for the uh, TBM machine, which is a, a small tunnel boring machine. Uh, in other words, micro tunneling. 
so they'll receive the machine into that shaft. They'll be drilling from the corner a block away. Those shafts are 15 foot diameter because we're jacking the pipe as we're drilling. The first thing we do, uh, we come in, we saw cut the pavement, remove that. We excavate down to about a 10 foot elevation below street level. We set a corrugated uh, metal can in the top 10 foot section. And then that's when the machine, the, the, the big crane with the, uh, with the drill rig on it, comes in and starts drilling from that point on. We're taking, we're going down to about a, uh, a minus 40 below street level. And during the process, we're drilling under a hydrostatic head. The hole is filled with water and there's a drilling fluid, a polymer added to it to stabilize the, the walls of the shaft while we're drilling. But once we reach our depth, then we set a steel liner, a one-piece steel liner, about an inch and a half thick walls, down inside the shaft. the walls, it keeps it from caving in, and it stays there forever. It never gets removed. The next step is we pour a concrete plug in the bottom to keep the bottom from coming up underneath us. So to stabilize the bottom of the shaft for the excavation. From that point, we grout the exterior portion of the, of the metal cans to stabilize that area. Once that's accomplished, then we neutralize the water with no more than chlorine. Chlorine's added to the water, it neutralizes the water. We can pump it directly into a sewer then. You know, that, that's not even to, to touch on the fact that in a 200-year-old city, the utilities that are underground were kind of trying to poke through and around and near. You know, the utilities are, some of them are 50-year-old water lines that are made of kind of brittle material and some of them are unidentified, you don't know what's there, some of them are abandoned. Um, when, when you have that old of a city, you have all kinds of utilities in the ground that we've been dealing with. So it's been, it's been an incredibly challenging uh, alignment. After the shaft has been installed, the TBM is set up and launched through the wall of the shaft using hydraulic jacks located in the drive shaft. As the jacks push the TBM forward, it rotates to loosen the material, which is then removed by water pumped through the system from the surface. When the jacks reach the end of their stroke, they are retracted and a single length of pipe is lowered into the shaft by a crane. When the TBM and pipe reach the receiving shaft, an opening is created in the shaft and the TBM is pushed out and lifted to the surface. The TBM is then returned to the drive shaft rotate and relaunch, or if both pushes have been completed, the TBM and surface support equipment is then relocated to the next shaft. Microtunneling operations can subject the pipe to forces in excess of 300 tons. Correspondingly, the pipe used needs to be very strong, and in order to survive in a wastewater environment, has to have good long-term corrosion characteristics. Mission Clay's no-dig pipe has these properties and so was utilized for this project. With the exception of the CSX Wamata crossing, where a steel casing with a fiberglass carrier pipe was required by the railroad.
with production rates averaging only 64 feet per day during the pipe installation activity. It was necessary to utilize multiple crews in order to finish the project on schedule. This process is repeated 1,142 times. The microtunneling process can become highly repetitive, but when problems do occur, they can be dramatic. I had a problem on this particular shaft in the way that the um, we use drop these shafts down and use a jet grouting to seal between the ground and the shaft. Unfortunately on this particular shaft we had a problem in the fact that the jet grouting didn't go exactly where it needed to go. So we've now had a problem when we cut the eye out that all the ground started to come in and actually filled the shaft with sand and water. So we've now been forced into another situation that we have to try and prevent any more ground coming into the shaft. So this is what this has actually been designed and made for. The intention of this now is we have to try and slide this roll piece of steel down the side of the shaft to actually form exactly where the existing hole was. What's he saying at the minute, Chad? excavating all the sand away and they pump grout in behind it, uh, concrete in behind it, so it should be pretty stable. We just got to get the sled where they put the tunnel for the pipe on, cleaned off so they can put this apparatus back in the water and it should seal it up. After the hole was successfully patched, microtunneling processes proceeded normally without impact to adjacent structures. After the pipe has been installed and the tunnel boring machine recovered, 
precast concrete manhole sections are lowered from the surface and the remaining space in the shaft is filled with a concrete ground. When the surface asphalt is repaired and the manhole cover installed, the process is completed. It's hard to believe that uh, 10 months ago we were in the same area digging for historic grave sites and then all the work in between and then 10 months later, it's a finished pavement and a manhole cover. Project team members included laborers and engineers, contractors and inspectors, suppliers, truck drivers, geologists, and city personnel, a diverse group of people working towards a common goal. And yeah, it's, it's teamwork. This whole scenario wouldn't happen if, if any, everybody didn't work together and, and, and do what we had to do. Um, you're talking a, a, a scale of a job within this vicinity, it's, it's enormous. You know, you, you don't have room, you just don't, there's so many overheads, so much underground. It's, uh, it's amazing it's, it's going in as, as, as easy as it is going in. Well, teamwork makes all the difference in the world. First of all, we try real hard to look out after each other, but I've uh, got an awesome team of guys that work really hard in this heat, and uh, it makes all the difference in the world. I think there's a level of trust that exists among the, mem you know, the, the team members that has allowed us some more freedom with, in how we deal with problems. We've really kept focused on solving the problem and getting the job built. And that's been, that's been a joy. Not all projects are like that. This one has been good. In a true sense of the word, it really has been a public-private partnership. And as a public-private partnership, uh, we have done things with and for the contractor that necessarily would not be done if it was solely a private um, venture. We worked with Crescent Resources to do a brochure on the microtunneling sewer project, which was sent out to all of the residents in the community um, along the alignment and even the expanded community. They held two public meetings where all the residents were invited. They had advertisements in the paper. We've had um, local newspaper coverage of the project. And I believe that's helped the residents understand what's going on. You know, at first I couldn't see how you all could dig all them holes without digging the whole street up. And as long as uh, people have been able to get there, mm -hmm. which they have been able to get there, uh, I don't think it's been no impact on them at all Good. because parking is the main thing and if mm -hmm. you can't park somewhere close enough to the place, they don't promise nobody um, a parking place, get out to the thing and walk in the door. Everybody has to do a little walking, but so far it hasn't been to a point where they couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're doing all right. Great. Uh -huh. The developer uh, uh, spent a great deal of effort uh, communicating with the uh, various uh, neighborhoods. Uh, 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 you know, prior to uh, beginning construction, and uh, uh, you know there, there are always uh, uh, some complaints and, and some issues, but uh, uh, they've always been uh, addressed uh, uh, very directly. Um, Bobby Zyler and the project have worked with the school system. And one of the things we said was just don't put up you know fencing. Let's do something a little different. Well, they did a competition amongst local schools again to involve the public. And the school children, you know, designed uh, several themed boards uh, on wood. They are displayed around the site, and we've actually had school tours to the site. So it's it's a very uh, integrated project with the public. Without the cooperation of the city, particularly T and E S um, and engineering, they have made the project possible by providing. You know, prompt responses to issues that come up. Having them really kind of on our side from the very beginning has been um, an essential component to getting to getting the project done in, in the timely fashion that it has been. As the machine starts making the turn, that pressure will start coming down. As we uh, approach the uh, completion of the Potomac Yard uh, trunk sewer project, I uh, I have come to appreciate what a big 
complex project it is, and the complexity in terms of uh, uh, human lives that we're touching through it. The technology is proven, but the application of the technology in this kind of environment is all brand new, and it's been a real uh, uh, compliment to this team that they've been able to interact so closely with the residences and the businesses and the uh, existing life of Alexandria with uh, the minimum disruption that has been. To stretch the kind of uh, resources, uh, talent, and uh, people, and uh, coordination of two miles through an historic city is a tremendous project. And it required all kinds of disciplines to come to the table and work together. I think as we complete it, we have a great sense of uh, satisfaction, a job well done, uh, and I think that uh, we're completing a job that's a lot bigger uh, than the one we thought we started with.